Hi guys, Rob here with Deluxe Gaming. So I just had a game slipped to me under the table by Indie Voyage. In case that name doesn't ring any bells, it just so happens to be the publisher for Reassembly, which if you are at all familiar with my channel, you will know I kind of sort of absolutely love Reassembly. So naturally, we're going to take a closer look at their next new project called Venture Forth, being developed by Arclight Worlds and potentially crowdfunded via Kickstarter, just like Reassembly was. Venture Forth is a procedurally generated first-person dungeon exploration game where you battle dungeon dwellers, gather loot, and puzzle solve using the tools you find to navigate deeper and deeper into a challenging and immersive labyrinth where you will hopefully find the heart of the dungeon. The game has already been in development for about two years now, and as far as I know, has been constructed from the ground up. Like, from scratch. Like C++ as I understand it. I just adore ambitious indie development companies. It's refreshing to see something that doesn't look or feel like everything else in existence. But, that being said, this is still an alpha and is incomplete. Hence the current Kickstarter campaign. I think they need about $20,000 to complete the campaign and move forward. I think they need to still work on some music, maybe some brush-ups graphically speaking, some content, that kind of thing, and then it will be a complete game. I will leave information and links in the description below if you want to go check out their current Kickstarter campaign, which I think is about 22 days left, I believe, at the time of making this video. Also, I think around the $20 level, you could actually get a copy of Reassembly as well as donate to the project and get a copy of Venture Forth at the same time. So yeah, because it's all Indie Voyage, which is the same publisher of Reassembly too as well. So kind of cool, check them out. And now without further ado, although this is very unlike the games I normally play on my channel, I think we should take a first look at the game itself and the gameplay, so away we go. Okay, let's do this, pressing any key to begin. So this is the newest version. They just sent this to me the other day. Uh, actually, this morning, I believe. I had played around with the last version. Not very much, just enough to be dangerous, I think. But let's take a look at the controls. So if you press H on the keyboard, it comes up with a full list of what is available at this time. So WASD to move, of course. Actually, left and right, right mouse button to activate left and right hand. Makes sense. Spacebar to jump. E for the equipment menu. Very, very important. F for the map. The map feature is really unique and distinct and reminds me of something else, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Q swaps weapon loadouts, uh, left shift, shift for sprint, and actually in the version that they sent to me before this, you had to hold down the left shift to sprint all the time. Now you automatically sprint, and when you hit the left shift, you actually walk normally. So yeah, nice change actually, I like that. Uh, your life bar at the bottom of the screen, it's actually the top left hand of the screen now. It used to be the bottom, and I actually prefer it up in the top. I can see it a little bit better. The enemy's life bar is also on the top of the screen. I think it shows up on this side, on the right side. And and uh, WASD, navigate the menu. Uh, oh, in the equipment menu. Well, we'll talk about the equipment menu when we get there. Because um, it's very unique and something I've never... I haven't quite seen anything quite like it yet before. But uh, uh, anyway, always uh, we can use H for help. We can Y tog toggles the graphics quality. So right now we are running in 1920 by 1080. But you already knew that because you are viewing this on YouTube on... Uh, probably 19, or 1080, right? So Alt F4 to exit the game. So <laughs> uh, kind of the universal exit game feature. Alt Enter to toggle full screen or not. Alt C for the credits. Um, we're not going to do any of that. We are just going to get into it. So let's first off, WASD to move around. Pretty straightforward, yes. And of course, we are in sprint mode. When I hold down the shift button, we slow down. You know, it's the first thing I usually do when I'm playing uh, Skyrim or something because I think it defaults so that you have to hold shift to run, but I set it so it automatically I'm running all the time. There's no consequence to it. It's not like there's any stamina. So right off the bat, you can see it's like all these particle effects in the air. It almost looks like uh, little snowflakes or something. Anyway, it just it kind of looks. It reminds me of like it's I'm in a I'm in a in a volcanic volcanic dungeon or something, and this is like ash floating in the air. I don't know, kind of gives it a cool little feel. The neat thing about indie development is because they don't have massive budgets for um, very pretty, pretty uh, environments created by, you know, million dollar teams. They have to do their best to try and make things appear to look like they're made by million dollar teams. Now, of course, you can tell like the textures and the walls here, they're, I mean, this is pretty old school stuff. This isn't, this isn't anything dramatically new, but like I said, this was all built from the ground up. But you know, with those little particle effects in there, it really does add another whole element to looking pretty. Um, also, as you can see, uh, very pretty effect from the torch itself. Isn't that neat? And it looks like 
When I hold down the button, it looks like I could probably use it to light something on fire. Isn't that cool? Um, also, you'll notice the messages on the top left. I'm not about to drop my last torch. Uh, th th there'll be messages given to you all throughout your journey. Some of them are kind of funny. Some of them are, you know, kind of hints. Some of them are just quirky and weird. Um, also, you'll notice I do have a sword in my right hand, and of course, holding the right, hitting the right button, and I can use the sword. Um, I, holding the right mouse button down doesn't do anything. It just chops. If I hold it down, I just keep chopping. <laughs> there is a save feature, but to save officially in the game and reload at certain points, I think you need these crystals, um, which you can find throughout the dungeon that allow you to, to save and such. Um, it is kind of a, an adventure kind of game, but I also think that there's a little bit of an RPG thing going on here too. Let's go over the equipment menu. This is really interesting. It took me a minute to kind of figure it out. It's not totally completely intuitive, but it, but it's all there. It all works. Okay, so their uh, loadouts are one to nine. I believe you can have up to, no, you can have up to seven different loadouts. So if I hit the one button, of course, it goes to loadout one, which is actually down on the bottom here too as well. Loadout two is of course two, three, four, five, etc, 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 and it shows the loadouts here. So in the loadout, the top slot is reserved for armorers and stuff like that. So um, if I want my first slot to be armorless, I can be armorless. So every time, so if I'm in my two slot, which is my bow, I have my bow going and say in my one slot, I, I reserve for uh, moving really quickly and say the armor I normally have uh, encumbers me, I can actually have a slot that doesn't have armor at all, right? So, and then two has my armor, etc. right? So let's go back to the equipment screen. Normally I would have an armor. Now most equipment does have different attributes attached to it that are linked to like your hit points, defense, running speed, damage, and damage per second, etc. So, and equipment can vary so drastically in the game. And I've seen, I haven't even played that much and I've already seen a lot of different variation. I've even seen a little handgun thing. Now some of the graphics, there's placeholders for the graphics on some of this stuff, but um, the mechanics are there. Okay, so Lodo 2, of course I have a bow and then you get to pick what kind of arrows you're gonna use. Um, sometimes you start with different arrows too. That was another thing. And then of course, uh, if you don't pick an arrow, it'll automatically equip one for you and you hold down the left mouse button and it targets. And then you fire it and then of course you can go pick up your arrows look at that isn't that cool eh and then of course because we even though we didn't equip arrows right away it did uh, it auto equipped whatever we had available. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, you hold down the left mouse button and it targets. And then you can actually see the arc too, right? So there is some physics here as well. Of course, any game that has physics has a greater appeal for me and probably for most other people. So, and then three, uh, so you, these are the default loadouts. Uh, one, actually, let's go back to our one, right? So yeah, we took off our armor for one. Okay, so really easy to change your loadouts. Now these, the next two slots are your left and right hand. So for your left hand, in this one, I just happen to have a torch. This looks like this might be placeholder graphics or something. Um, but let's just unequip everything so you can kind of see. So to load up something into my left hand on slot one, I would hold down the left button on the equipment I want to use. So we've got swords, we've got cave torches, we've got healing potions, we've got a treasure key, we've got a village bow, and we've got a volcanic key. Both of them, the keys open up different types of things, obviously, right? Um, so for example, if I want slot one, if I want whenever I hit one on the keyboard to load up something that has a sword, I would left click on what I want on my left hand. So if I wanted a sword in my left hand, I would left click. And say when I have a torch in my right hand, I would right click on the torch and it'll load up in my right hand. Makes sense. And then of course I use them respectively, left hand for my sword and right hand for my torch. Or right mouse button, left mouse button, right mouse button. Makes sense? Cool. And then of course I can switch around pretty easily. Q will switch out, switch out one and two respectively. So if I hit Q, I go to two. If I hit Q again, I go back to one, etc. Back and back, back and forth, back and forth. And then of course, if I hit three, I can load up loadout three and loadout four. Now you'll notice some placeholder graphics here. So the key is actually a little arrow right now and the healing salve, which that red thing is, that red ball in three is actually healing salve. And if I hold down the right mouse button, actually, if you look at our health up at the top here, it, we are down a little bit of health because we actually dropped from above and we're gonna drop again. Oh, that hurt, but you can see my health go down there and I can actually use that health salve, hold it down and heal up 10% of my health. Pretty cool, and you only have so many uses out of a health salve, right? And I actually prefer, I prefer to have my sword in my right hand so I can actually clear this. Whoops, ah, what did I do? Ah, sorry, go back to one. I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna right click on my sword. That way it's in my right hand and I'm gonna put my torch in my left hand. There, I just, it just feels better to be using my sword on my right side because I'm right handed, I guess. Oh, let's talk about the map. So if you hit F, 
loads up this awesome three-dimensional map. It reminds me of... No, it looks nothing like it, but it does remind me of the Daggerfall map, the original Daggerfall, like the original, original Daggerfall from like what, I, I don't know how many years ago that is now, where, and it, and it, uh, of course, um, fills in as you go. You can actually see it on the right side as well, so you have an auto map as you're traveling, um, but as you go, of course, it fills in this auto map too as well, so kind of neat. So you can see we just passed from the steps. <laughs> oh, there was another direction. Oh, I could have gone the other way. I didn't know that. Hold on. I haven't gone the other way before. I didn't even know you could go the other way. I, is there a secret door there? Oh, crazy. Sorry, guys. I've never seen this side. So, um, interesting. There is a, like, a, you can see it. You can see through it. Oh, crazy. So, yes, there is secret doors and illusionary walls and illus illusionary things in the game. And you need to have this wandy thing to uh, reveal them. So I actually cannot go through that and actually go to the other side until I get this little wandy, the this thing that removes illusions. So cool, the map, I, I actually never saw that part before. Cool. So now normally these would be prece procedurally built dungeons, I believe. Um, and from what I've been told, th this is all going to be procedurally built. So every time you come into the game, it's going to be brand new and everything's going to be totally different. Um, so here, this is uh, three steps forward, two steps back. That was a little message you gave me. So this is like a little circular staircase. If we go to the map, you can actually kind of see it. Ah, yes, see the question marks? That's saying it's going down, but uh, it doesn't know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, now we can actually go down these steps. It would take forever just to keep going down these steps. Or or this little, these, these little uh, lines in the air, they symbolize a vent and the vent is going upwards. So we can actually ride the vent all the way down and we can actually look at our, yeah, so we can, we can't quite see around us, I guess. It doesn't expose everything on the map. Like we can only, we're only exposing what we can see in front of us on the map. But anyway, that was a fast way to get down. Kind of cool. So it's, you know, it's almost like little puzzles as you go along too as well. Now we're about to face our first encounter. Not every battle is necessarily a battle that you want to fight because there are some bad guys that are situated in places that are going to be really difficult or too di they're, they're just going to be too tough or whatever. Maybe you're just not nimble like me and you're not able to fight a good battle. You can actually find ways around guys or you can cause them to do funny things like in this case. Now these guys, I believe the graphics for a lot of these creatures are just placeholders as well. No, they have bows. <laughs> but I, I, playing this a couple times, I've actually caused them to run themselves right off the uh, <laughs> off the side and kill themselves by falling, which is kind of cool. But as long as I keep moving, they're not going to hit. There, there goes one. <laughs> so I haven't actually raised my sword or my bow yet to them, and I can actually cause them to fall to their doom. <laughs> The downside is, I don't think, I think they're, uh, they, when they, when creatures die, they leave behind stuff. And stuff is really important in this game, of course. Um, this guy, uh, let's see if we can jump over and battle him to the death. Now, the graphics for these creatures are placeholders as far as, I, oh, he fell. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Um, a bit, there is, uh, that's part of the reason why they need funding in Kickstarter is to develop some more graphics for the bad guys. Oh, look what I just got. I just got the Staff of Radiance. Now, if I remember correctly, Staff of Radiance, capable of emitting light powerful enough to dispel even the most tangible illusions. So this is what I was talking about, and I'm going to attach this to my slot loadout 5. Okay, so let's actually go back, because I've never actually seen the, uh, I've been forward here. But I've never seen that little secret entrance going the other way. So I'm actually pretty excited. Only fools actually believe it exists, uh, is the message. Now, I think I can ride this up too as well. Oh, maybe I can't. Oh, no. To go back up, I'd have to... Uh, unless there's another way. I, I think I'd have to go all the way up like this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to torture you guys. I'm just going to keep moving forward. But eventually, I'm going to want to go see what that secret door is. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go forward here. Now... Uh, as far as, so this thing here, watch, watch me use it. Zap. Now, anything that's an illusion will appear uh, as it's supposed to after I use that, which is kind of cool, kind of neat. I don't need it right this minute, but I will need it soon. Ah, huh. ah, huh. see, look at this. Now, if we look at the map, oh, we are in the abyss, and it looks like we could actually jump down and find some stuff. Uh, you can jump a long ways in this game right now. So it looks like we can actually jump to the side there. And maybe there's a little secret passage on the side. And we could definitely go down. But we got to be careful because if you fall too far, of course, you will die. Now, if we go forward here, uh, you can see through it. You can barely see through it. So there's actually a secret door here. So we can actually use our Staff of Radiance. <laughs> Zap! 
Ah, and it reveals a little gate. And of course, this gate, I'm not sure which key I use. This is the volcanic key. Uh, so I can go, ah, there we go, volcanic key. No one has ever escaped, not alive anyway. Unlocked a volcanic cage. Okay, and this is the chamber of the heart. So this is the demo portion. Oh no, I forgot about that. Whoops. Okay, so we are trapped in here. Um, I have a feeling that this is going to spell my doom. <laughs> so like I said, the, the game is normally procedurally generated, but I, this is this is a static uh, little adventure in the game where it's so far every time I've jumped in it's been the same um, Now here. This is the heart of the dungeon looks like some placeholder graphics in there But you feel how th the lighting is spectacular and every once in a while everything really like it shakes like it's it's like we're in a volcano and it's like uh, it's looked like there's lava or something underneath that's a wonderful thing about these uh these indie development companies, because they don't have the big budget, budget for graphics, they have to do fancy stuff like that to kind of give you that feel, and it really does give you that uh, kind of eerie, neat feel. Anyway, so we're, let's see if we can't solve this. So we need to open that cage. I'm presuming we need to step on both of these. Ah, there we go. Now we can grab the heart of the dungeon. Heart of the volcano, sorry. This isn't the heart of the dungeon. This is uh, an intermediate step. So we need to, uh, now, what do we do with the heart of, heart of the volcano? Let's attach that to one of our uh, oh oh look what we got some other stuff too okay villa we started with the village sword uh, heart of the volcano we just got that we'll talk about that in a second uh it it useful for finding your way around glows brighter with more torches oh hold on that's not uh, embody <laughs> sorry the heart of the volcano embodies the volcano's power activation speeds time increasing agility low power uh decreasing low power decreases effectiveness i i guess i don't know uh, volcanic key we had so save crystal uh, we'll put that in slot six the save crystal will uh, act uh, activation save the state of the entire world so this is how you save the game um in progress um <laughs> fencing sword they took some kind of placeholder graphics for a fence <laughs> it's a two-headed sword anyway i think i think we will actually set that up as seven actually no we're going to do that as three and an alternative uh, equip as three because uh, a two-headed sword actually isn't a terrible idea <laughs> um, It's not a two-headed sword. It looks like a fence, but I'm sure see how things vibrate like the whole cave is vibrating It's very cool. Um, also, what else did we get? Oh, we got a hand cannon So this is like a big it's like a gun now, of course again placeholder graphics, but look it's kind of like takes a long time to target Target it Boom. Oh look at that. It's almost like a like a spell, eh? I'm, I'm really excited to see what they do with the final graphics on that. That looks so cool! Um, unfortunately, it's just an arrow. I'm assuming it's going to be like a blunderbuss or something. Like a big a big handgun. <laughs> um, kind of mixing technology with the, the old school uh, medieval RPG stuff. So that looks like all we got. So um, the we'll save our game here because I'm sure bad stuff is going to happen. So to save it, you just hold it down and poof! We are saved. Save crystal activated. And then I'm not sure what happens. I can hold it down. Bring it up to 100%. I don't know what that does yet, because I think we've already already saved the game. So I don't know, but I leave it at 100%. Perfect. We're gonna put back our regular sword and shield. Actually, no. Before we do that, let's get our equipped. Let's get the heart of the volcano equipped. We're gonna put that on seven. We're gonna attach some armor to that loadout. We're also going to attach. The regular sword. No, we can't. Oh yeah, sword and oh, there we go. So on. So this is. Oh, I put it on the wrong hand. So I want the heart of the volcano on the left hand, sword on the right hand. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. So now the heart of the volcano. What what that does is when I activate it. Watch this. Boom! Look at how quick I move. Pretty cool, eh? So right now, what I'm trying to do is, uh, of course, lift this grate up. I think to get at that button underneath. Whoa! Whoa! What happened? What's going on? Uh, something just attacked me. Must have attacked me through a wall. Hmm. <laughs> uh, alpha bad guys. Or maybe there's an illusion there. I bet you that's what happened. Okay, so let's... Uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> we no longer have our healing salve loaded up. So let's let's put that under three. Uh, let's healing salve and uh, torch. Or healing salve and sword. Actually, yeah. Sword on the right hand. I gotta remember to do that. Sword on the right hand, healing self on the left. Okay, so three will be my healing one, so let's heal up here before we move any further, because uh, something on the other side of that grate chewed on me a little bit. And I, I thought... 
I must be going insane. That's what it's saying on the left side. Must be going insane. Now, I thought you could only use these salves so many times, but maybe this one's, you know, uh, unlimited just for the purposes of this demo. All right, so let's... So we need to... Here's a little cavern, of course, with a little blue dot. And then, of course, there is another one way over here. Hit that one, and that should open up our little grate. So, yes, I have played this far before. Um, so that... Yeah, so that... That little cage, it lifted up, and now there's an little, another little blue button there. But I suspect also that there is something behind that, so we're gonna use our little dispelling wand. Aha! Um, but I gotta be careful because something was shooting at me here. So, and I'm assuming uh, this is about as far as I've made it because as soon as I go through here, I've died. <laughs> Just letting everybody know. Okay, so uh, I think we'll stick with our actually, we'll do our number three loadout because that's our sword and our healing salve. Seems like a good idea. All right, so let's... Oh, no! Uh-oh, here we go. Something happened. Okay, bad guy. Um, okay. Uh, this is where I died. Uh, I have not made it past this point. Oops. Ah! Whoa, he hits hard, and I'm not very good at this. And I'm trapped. I can't actually move, and I've died. Okay, uh, so we could try that one more time. Uh, we could load the autosave by pressing enter, and, or we could load the crystal save. I guess the autosave is here automatically too anyway, so let's just try that again. Uh, plan of attack, I think we need to, I don't know, maybe keep our distance and use the bow? We could try that. I don't know if we can, but we could try it. Let's go! Uh-oh. I think, I think he's coming out from the same room. I think I just have to, uh, yeah, so everything's kind of just sort of looking at him. It looks like he's bending reality. Uh oh, that's not good. Oh, yeah, that's not gonna work. I'm not even sure how much damage this guy's supposed to take. And, uh, I apparently really suck here. <laughs> Crap! Ah! Okay. Maybe I shouldn't be going after this guy yet, but there's really nowhere else to go. Uh, let's just try that one more time. And then if this doesn't work, we will try maybe going through that other door at the beginning because, uh, yikes, this isn't going well. Okay, let's try one more time. It, it seems like he comes on me, he's, he's at me too quick, and I really don't have a chance to act here. I, I should have the uh, healing salve in my left hand, but, okay, yikes, okay, uh, it seems like I can't run either. Uh, oh, maybe I need to grab that key, and then just keep going. I never thought of that. Ah! There we go. Oh, we're avoiding the fight. Avoid the fight. He's shooting at me. That's not good. That's the answer, guys. We need to avoid the fight. Uh-oh. Ah! I should have that... Uh, I should... Okay. I think I know what I need to do now. I think I know what I need to do. I think I just need to run from this guy. So we're going to use the heart of the... Uh, heart of the volcano this time. We're going to actually just turn around and go. We're going to bolt. Okay, yeah, so he's coming at me from the same direction. I get it. I get it now. So I just need to, uh... Ah, run! Turn, turn. Okay, I'm stuck. There we go. There we go. Now I use the heart thing. This gets us superhuman speed. We're actually... Oh, here we go! How do I go up? How do I go up? Um, up! I don't know. How do I go up? Um, one second. Okay, maybe there... Is there stairs? Oh, he's still coming. Like, how do I... Oh, there we go! I should be jumping! Jumping! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, I have to use the key! Okay, here we go. I've got it. I've got the answer. I know what I need to do. So, if you saw, there was a... Uh, there was a cage in there. So, we actually have to have a key ready. So, as a matter of fact, we're not going to use a sword at all for this one. We're going to use... Um, we're going to use the heart of the dungeon, and on our right hand, we're going to use the yellow key, which is the treasure key. I think that's right. Whoops, I screwed that up. Uh, we want the... Let's just kill both of those. Okay, so, we want the heart of the volcano on the left hand, and the key on the right. Oh, I screwed that up. Really? Okay, heart of the... Heart in the left, the key on the right. Okay, for some reason that is not loading properly. Um, maybe if we do the... Heart in the left. Yeah, there we go. I don't know why that was working. Okay, there we go. Heart of the left, key on the right. Okay, let's try that again. It was user error, I'm sure. Oh! What? Where's the bad guy? Oh. 
Now he's coming after me. Oh, oh what is going on? Uh, I think there's another bad guy in here somewhere, and they're eating me. Uh, we need to get out of here fast. Okay, let's go. Uh, jump. There we go. Ah, uh, yes, away from danger. Oh, we did it this time. Perfect. Okay, so... And then there was a cage right here. Oh, perfect. Uh-oh, oh, oh, something's still eating me. Who's attacking me? Hold on, we need to heal. We need to heal. Healing. Who is fight? Oh, jeez. So, as you can see, this is... It's kind of... It's, it's a little unforgiving, but I also don't really know what I'm doing. So, let's try this one more time. Oh. Oh, this is where... Okay. Well, that's okay. Is there somebody up here? Like, who was firing at us? Somebody was trying to eat us here. Uh, okay. I think we can just come up this way. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Now, we, we gathered some loot on the way there. We can actually use... Oh, that's another new crystal. So I think we can use that for a new save point. But uh, I'm happy just... Uh, uh, maybe we should heal. This is a good time to heal. Because it doesn't look like anybody's eating us right now. <laughs> oh, I can just hold it down. That's way faster. Look at that. Look, 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 look. Oh, no more healing potion. Guess that's it. Party's over. <laughs> um, a corrupted Ashbringer. So this would give me five, minus 500 max HP, which would kill me. <laughs> but it gives me three, plus 300 damage, plus 200 percent run speed minus 100 percent defense um that's but i can't equip it if i equip it right now i'll die so i have to find something that gives me more hp to equip that so that you know i don't die when i equip it interesting so i don't know what it is is it a it's a shield maybe i don't know what it is and then we've got uh another save crystal which is good and actually let's put that in six i don't know if, i don't really understand how these save crystals work quite yet i think that does that mean i can just use this one again Yes, okay, so yes, so now I have a new save point. Um, we didn't unlock that cage yet, too, so we'll go do that now. It's kind of tricky to see what's going on, um, but I, you know, that's part of the challenge, I think. There we go, more goodies. Uh, another save crystal, swig of healing potion, ah, and uh, something else. Oh, 10 volcanic arrows, so a different type of arrow. So I think we'll just keep going up unless we see something. Oh, let's take a look at our map. Oh, here we go. Okay, so the nest. So if we go forward, okay, so if we go around here, we should be able to, ah, uh, okay, and then I think when, when, when it's going up like that, that just means I'm going to jump higher. I think that's what it means. And then, of course, when you're coming down, if you're falling into this little misty stuff, into that vent, then of course it slows you down and you don't get hurt. Okay, so this is uh, another key. So I think seven was, yeah, we're, we're good to go here. Perfect. And we should probably get ready for trouble. <laughs> okay, I think we're good to go. Let's uh, let's check out the nest. Is it ever dark? Whoa, there's bad guys in here. Okay, so they're probably using bows because I don't see anything, but uh, it's so dark. Ah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you should jump high with those vents. I, I don't see anything. Like, where are the bad guys? I don't see them. Oh! Jesus, stop it! Ah! Okay, uh, this is... Hot. It's so dark. There he is. Blast. <laughs> okay, uh, one more time. It's a lot of fun! It's super fun! I, I, uh, it's different from most things I play, for sure. Oh! Wait, we don't have our sword equipped. Oh, that, that might be helpful. But even with a torch in here, it's absolutely pitch black. Therein lies the challenge. But it looks like you can die as many times as you want. You just keep coming back and hoping for the best, I guess. Okay, so he... Okay, so he... I can see him, but I can't see anything else. Uh, he is... Wow, is he ever firing fast? I, I don't know if you guys can see anything, but I sure can. Ah, okay, one more time. Uh, let's go. Maybe I can lure him out. That's actually not a terrible idea. Or maybe, uh, uh, maybe, I don't know. Do we have anything else? What else can we use here? You know, I, I, half of this is just trying to figure out, I, I wonder if we use the, the wand in here, if that would lighten things up. No, not really. 
Uh, oh, it's definitely brighter when I do that. For sure. Oh, can I go down this little hole? Ah! Ah! So, there's bad guys down here, too. Somebody is still attacking me really badly with volcanic arrows. Ah, the abyss! Oh, we're back in the abyss! Remember the abyss? Oh, this is where we were before! Okay. Ah, he's still... Ah! Sludge. <laughs> okay, guys. I think we're gonna call that an episode. This is pretty intense and pretty fun. Um, I really suck at it. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that these guys get their get their Kickstarter. Uh, I'm gonna throw them a few bucks just just for the sake of throwing them a few bucks. And just so everybody knows, I have been given nothing. I I do not take any uh, donations uh, in order to do videos or promote anybody else. I play what I want to play, and I only put things on the channel that I think are pretty cool and neat and fun. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, check them out on their Kickstarter page. This is Venture Forth.